hi guys welcome to my channel so I'll be talking about graphs in Python and I assume that you know what graphs are because there are you know lots of videos on graphs on YouTube so I won't be taking that I'll be focusing more on the coding part and how one must perform in an interview first we have DFS traversal okay so when do we use DFS for example, you're given a question and um, you'd want to see if DFS would be faster or BFS would be faster or which one will give you a good result. Then these are the reasons. First is that DFS is better if the target is far from the source. So let's take an example. Here we have a graph and for example, you want to traverse to node 3. So what you'll do is for DFS, Let's take DFS. First, we go from 1 to 2, then 2 to 4. As you know, now we'll be traversing 2 in depth. So 2 has 4 and 5. Let's go to 4, then 4 has 6. Let's go to 6, then 6 has 7. Now 7 is the last node, so we go backward and check. Does any other node have one more way to go? So we see that 2 has one more way to go to node 5 go to 5 then 6 is already visited let's go back and we see that 3 is not visited so here we reach 3 now you saw that to reach the node 3 it took a really lot of time so let's see how bfs works for the same bfs will go from 1 to 2 and then 1 2 3 Right, because it will first take the neighboring nodes. It won't go in the depth way, it goes in the breadth way. So to reach 3, it was really easy and faster. So in such scenarios, we will always prefer BFS. DFS is only when you want to go deep into the tree and reach the farthest node. For example, you want to reach node 5, 6 or 7. Then we'll take DFS. Okay. Next reason is that DFS is faster than BFS. Uh, it also depends on the same thing whether the target is near or far. So this point is actually related to the first point that if the target is far from the source, then DFS is faster than BFS. Next is that DFS will not be used for shortest path problems. Okay. Okay. Let's take example for this again. Here if you want to find the shortest path between 1 and 5 okay let me show you quickly from 1 to 5 how will you go in dfs you go from 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 6 6 to 7 and 2 to 5 and 1 to 3 right so now the second last node was 5 okay do you think it's the shortest path? No, it's not. So for shortest path, if I use BFS, it is 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 2. Then you explore the nodes of 2. Okay. Then finally explore the nodes of 3. That means BFS, you don't need to traverse the entire tree at all. If you find 5 before only, chalo, done. You found, found 5, you can end the program and you can tell that the shortest path is 1, 2, 3. 3 to 5 okay so dfs is not preferred for shortest path problems it's always better, better to use bfs okay so let's see how we can implement dfs recursively recursion may we know that we use a recursive stack and we call the recursive function again and again okay so this is our graph and this is the adjacency matrix of our graph and we are taking the source node as one so 1 is our source node, vertex node will pass 1 and path will store the path of DFS traversal. Path may first, we, in, we add the first node, that is 1. Then we check for neighbor in graph of vertex. Neighbor may we have 2 and 3 as you can see. So pehle lete 2. 2 if 2 is not in path. Ab 2 is not in the path so we can proceed and path equal to we call the function again with the node 2 now okay 
so the first call had one right so let's insert one in the recursion stack and now we are calling it for two so now two is added here okay so a path will add two then neighbor of two a neighbor of two is four and five so let's take four here now four is not in path right so path is equal to dfs of we'll call this function for four now okay the four gets added to the recursion stack now four is not in the path so let's add it then for neighbor and graph of vertex neighbor of four is six six is not in the path so path will call the function recursively for node six here okay now similarly the same happens for six and neighbor is seven so we call this function for seven now we see that seven node node does not have any neighbors right so here for neighbor in graph of seven this does not get executed hence this call is finished and we return this value so it's no longer in the stack then we check for six six does not six has a neighbor seven and it is already being executed by the stack so it is removed then we have four four does not have any neighbors so this is also gone then two has a neighbor five now was five encountered before it wasn't so that means we can call this function for five it, get, it gets added to the path and we check for the neighbors of five which is six and six is already executed so we don't go there and five has been executed then we check for two two is on the top of the stack so now two has neighbors four and five which are executed this is done one has neighbors two and three and three was not called before so we call this function for three we add it to the path we check for the neighbor of three which is five and five is executed already so lastly this is also returned and hence this is the final path which we get so this is returned and this is our answer dfs path so guys this was the dfs recursive code and you should always have the practice of evaluating the time and space complexity of the code here the time complexity is big o of v plus e because when we traverse the graph we go through all the vertices and the, all the edges right we evaluate this node then we use this vertex to go to the next node so v is the number of nodes vertices whereas e is the number of edges and the space complexity is big o of v that is the number of nodes see because space is getting used in the adjacency matrix right and we also have an additional recursive stack space which is always used in recursion right this one so in order to improve the time complexity and the space complexity the time complexity usually remains the same uh, the iterative method is better where this space gets cancelled out that i'll be showing in the next video which will be iterative solution on dfs so i hope you understood the solution and the concept behind dfs in recursive manner so guys that's all i hope you enjoyed the video thank you